In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Of the times when through cowardice or fear we have not professed that we were Christians, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Of the times when we have usurped Christ's authority by our criticisms and judgments on others, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Of the times when we have ignored our Lord's command by ignoring others, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you, for he was but one when I called him. But I blessed him, and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats, but my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the words of your hearts. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. O oh Lord, your love and your forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. When I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you.
praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth, they will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministry, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. God in Christ was reconciling the world to himself, and he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, 
You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It was only when I was carefully reading this particular Gospel again that I realised that there are two distinct questions. He's not asking the same question twice. He asks, first of all, who do people say that the Son of Man is? He's asking, who do they think is the Messiah? Who is the one to come? And they reply, well, some think he's John the Baptist. John the Baptist, we know, is that strange figure out in the wilderness, very much a reincarnation of Elijah. And they say, well, others think he is Elijah. And it was indeed part of their belief that Elijah would come again to herald the coming of the Messiah. And others, they say, think, well, perhaps Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And then there's a distinct change in the question. He says, but who do you say I am? He doesn't claim to be the Messiah. He doesn't claim to be the Son of Man. And yet, Peter, by divine revelation, is able to proclaim, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I wonder if Jesus was standing here today, and he asked you, who do you say that I am? Now many in the world would say, well, a very great teacher, a moral educator, a man of God. But would they say you are the Christ? Would you say you are the Christ, the Son of the living God? Now, you've had the benefit of over 2,000 years of Christianity to teach you. But be warned, if you say that, there is a consequence. For Peter, his declaration of faith in Jesus as the Messiah came with the cost of his self-sacrifice. For Jesus says to Peter, you've got incredible responsibility. You are the rock on which I will build my church. We heard in our first lesson from Isaiah how the people were reminded that they were built on the faith of Abraham. They came descended from Abraham and Sarah, that is the old Israel. But the new Israel is to be founded upon Peter. And from then on, those of us who call ourselves Christian, accept that we are part of this new nation. So what does it mean to be a Christian? Of course, you could all give me a different answer. But if you look at St. Paul's letter to the Romans today, he gives us some idea of what it is, or at least what he believes it is, to be a Christian. Because Paul is giving us his gospel, his good news. It was understood in Jewish times, that there were two times in history. There was the present age, nothing's changed. The present age was seen as a time of disobedience, of distance from God, of faithlessness. <clears throat> and there was the age to come. That was to be the age of the Messiah, when people would live under God's just rule where there would be peace, joy, happiness. 
difference between being worldly in the present age and heavenly in the age to come. And Paul says that the Christian has to have a transformation. They are not to be conformed to the ways of the world. Now, in a way he's saying you have to be countercultural. But that doesn't mean that you just negate everything that's of the world, because God created it, and he created it good. But you do have to approach issues with the mind of heaven. So you live in the world, you live in the present age, and yet the way you think, the way you act, all that you do is done with the mind of the kingdom. Many people have said being a Christian is easy because you've got all the rules and regulations, all you have to do is follow them. <laughs> they think that's easy. No. But you do have the rules and regulations, but it's not that easy. Jesus came to fulfill the law, to give us a new spirit of understanding of God's will, so that we weren't slaves to the old law. We're actually encouraged to think for ourselves, but we're encouraged to think with kingdom values. Now, when I came into church this morning, I had a quick glance on your bookstore, because I thought it, there was something there that would be useful for this morning's sermon. And yes, in a bowl, getting a little dusty and faded, I have to say, were these wristbands. WWJD. It's a shame that they've got faded. It's a shame that they're gathering dust because actually we should all be at least mentally wearing one. WWJD. WWJD was to remind the wearer when they faced an issue to say to themselves, What would Jesus do? So when you come across issues, when you're confronted by the reality of the present age and it comes clashing with your understanding of the values of the kingdom, then you stop. You don't turn to a rule book, but you have to say, what would Jesus do? Now you won't always get it right, but sometimes you might. But at least you'll have stopped to think, what is God's will in this place now? I once knew uh, a young Roman Catholic seminarian, and his answer to everything was, but Holy Mother Church says, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> you'd raise an issue, and he'd say, well, Holy Mother Church says, and you'd say, well, what do you think? And it was put to the test, because in the parish we had a young expectant mother, and the pregnancy was going very wrong. In fact, she was faced with a stark choice, either to terminate the pregnancy, which of course would mean the death of the child, unborn, or go full term, which potentially would mean the death of both her and the child. Now, he was pulled up short because you can't, can't just, you know, if somebody you know is in a dilemma, even yourself, you can't just say, well, Holy Mother Church says. That's not how Jesus approached people. When the woman was caught in the act of adultery, did he say, oh yeah, well, you know, the Torah says, stone her to death, get on with it. No, he didn't. He saw a way of moving her forward <coughs> through repentance through understanding her sin, but allowing her to start again. Now I'm not telling you what he decided in the case, and, or indeed what the woman decided. But those are very real issues. That's quite a big one, but they, we face them in everyday life. Issues where we have to stop and say, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Because only then can we hope to live in the world as Christians, not conforming to the world, but being transformed by the Word of God. 
by the joy and the present reality of his kingdom, of the coming of the Messiah. What would Jesus do? And Paul goes further, because he says that we are all then called to a corporate responsibility. We're all members together of the body of Christ. He uses the same imagery in Corinthians. And it's a good image. I remember thinking at the beginning of all this uh, coronavirus stuff that suddenly there was a, a new understanding, a new understanding of our interrelatedness, of the value of everyone's work. No longer was it just doctors put on a pedestal, but nurses were included. And more than that, ancillary workers, those who kept the wards clean, the porters, even further, shopkeepers, people who drove delivery vans, the list goes on and on and on. And suddenly they were raised up, considered to be of true worth, of equal value. And that's because we were considering things as a corporate responsibility. We understood the value of each other. Because, as Paul asks, we were thinking more as selfless sacrifices, doing things for the common good. Now I have to say that the present age is creeping in again quite fast. Because I sense that, yeah, that was nice to say thanks to the NHS and people like that. But there is an increasing selfishness com coming back into society. People thinking just of themselves and not of the needs of others. People thinking of what they need rather than their responsibility to the wider body. That's not the way of Jesus. That's not what Jesus would do. We need to be reminded constantly that we have a corporate responsibility to each other in church and those outside our doors. We have a responsibility, just as it was laid upon Peter, we have the responsibility of proclaiming that good news of Jesus Christ, his message of reconciliation and the heralding of a new world order. It may seem beyond our capability, but that's because we don't even try. What would Jesus do? When we're asked that question that I asked at the beginning of the sermon, who do you say Jesus Christ is. If you say that he is the Messiah, then you proclaim the present reality of his kingdom. And if you proclaim the present reality of his kingdom, then you must live by its values. We will make mistakes, and thanks be to God he has given us a message of reconciliation as well. We need to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves down, and continue to challenge the present age, constantly asking and stopping ourselves, whether with one on our wrist, but certainly with one in our hearts and in our minds, in all that we do, in relation to our own lives, in relation to our our relationships with others, we must stop and say, what would Jesus do? We believe in one God, the Father of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen.
the seat of the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Church of God throughout the world, for unity in faith, in witness, and in service. For Glyn, our bishop, for all the churches under his care, and for all the priests who look to him for episcopal oversight. For this parish, and for those to whom it falls to appoint a new parish priest, Pray most earnestly for a speedy and right appointment. For all those churches suffering from persecution, and for places where Christians may not assemble to worship you without fear. And we pray that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, pray for us. Let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and the Parliament of this land. For those who administer the law and all who serve in public office. For all who strive for justice and reconciliation. And that by God's help, the world may be rightly governed, and all may live in peace and freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for this community, for all who live and work here, for all those suffering from the effects of COVID-19, the restrictions on their lives and mental well-being. We pray for the work of support agencies and medical services, and that by God's help, all may be strengthened in his love and brought to know him better. Lord, hear us. Maddox, Mabel James, Ian Carrera, Heidi 
Brian Turner, John Harkness, Sylvia Crown, Joyce Green, Robert Singleton, A. Hewis, William Pay, and for William Davis. Rest eternal grounds unto them, O Lord, and may their light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, hear us. In silence, let us pray for the week ahead, for our own needs and intentions, and for any we know who need our prayer. saints, both here on earth and in heaven. Let us join our prayers with those of the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, the Holy Mother of God, who intercedes for us constantly before your throne in heaven, and with all the angels and saints, as we say together, Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your God, Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given which human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our cup of salvation. Blessed be God Pray, my brothers and sisters, that sin, this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for all our good and for the love of his holy church. Merciful God, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ made us your people. In your love, grant peace and unity to your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Lord so with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, but Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day, the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, those now in the highs. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these your gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is Lord of the And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking to his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and 
We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of our Blessed Lady, Mother of God, Andrew and all the Apostles, the Holy Martyrs and all the Saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. commanded and taught us, so we pray. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed to those who are called to his son.
sit for a moment and they'll copy those for notes. May the Father draw us to himself in kindness. May the Son show us a path to true wisdom. May the Spirit live always in our hearts. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Grace unto thee according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, God of God, pray for us as in man, and for the Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, God of God, pray for us as in man. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the We beseech thee, O Lord, to pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.